And I think we are live. There we are. All right. So what's going on, everyone? This is Jay, Mr. Texas Cloud Town, back again with Shane Oakley. And I think what's we are- up? Ah. Oh, I did. Somebody had, a, had their volume on. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> but uh, so we're back. We're live. We're here again. Episode 14 for the Weekend Wisdom Vape Vlog with my co-host, Mr. Shane Oakley. Um, so we're going to talk it out. First, we're going to start off with what we're vaping on like we always do. And then we're going to get into some topics. But Shane, what's some uh, what's some good things that happened for you this uh, this week? Some positive things. Well, you know, we made it through another week. That's always positive. Uh, that's kind of the biggest positive I take from every week is I woke up looking down at the grass and not up at it. So, uh, let me think of anything else good that happened. Uh, I had some I mean, just, mail. Yeah. I mean, I got a little bit of vape mail. I think it was some coils and cotton, but that was really about all I got this week. Uh, just been doing a lot of research, man, you know, following the taxes and all the other, you know, advocacy stuff that's going on. That's, you know, kind of what I do with my spare time is I, you know, spend it kind of sitting here looking at stuff, trying to figure out what we can do next. Uh, but, you know, one great thing that came out of this week was the uh, the the vote in Texas. You know, oh, yeah. the, the, the I'm not I think it was a tax. Big tax in Texas got voted down. You know, that was the one of the best things I heard from Angela Garrity. I think it was yesterday or day before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah that was a the, really good thing for Texas. Yeah, that was the great news of the week is that got voted down. We'll just put it that way. Yeah, that, that was one of the things that I was uh, really happy for. And I honestly didn't get to do as much as I wanted to with that to try to help out. I've been like super busy with work and, not really been able to focus as much on the advocacy parts, but I've still been in it. I sent a few emails and a few letters after hearing about it. And then I didn't get to do as much as I wanted though, as many phone calls and everything. So, but yeah. I'm glad that there was, that we had a good uh, support group, I guess you could say from the vape community in Texas to actually go out there and do something about it and send in those emails, send in those phone calls and send in those letters, handwritten letters, like Grim Green always says, he loves handwritten letters. They feel more meaningful. I guarantee mm-hmm. if you sit down and you do a handwritten letter to your uh, uh, representatives, then I guarantee you they're going to pay attention a little bit more. That's just my opinion. Yeah. But what are you vaping on this week? Uh, nothing's really changed. I've added a couple of things, but you know, still got the uh, Axial on the White Dreamer. Nice. With, uh, of course, the All Day. Merge transmission. My secondary all day, Mr. Just Right with a dead goat. And still about halfway through the second bottle of this shamrock cookie. I just can't put that stuff down. Uh, last night I built this up, the uh, Pulse X sitting on the Keen. It's almost matching. It's gunmetal and black. It's close. Uh, I went back to the uh, grind. I wanted a little coffee comparison. That one's a vanilla latte, and then, of course, I still got my uh, Profile Unity on the Shogun. And in there, we got uh, Grindhouse with Americano. And kind of a throwback here. Went back to the old Kylan Mini. Saw it sitting on the shelf the other night. It looked lonely. So I picked it up, wicked it up, and uh, put some uh, cookie twist that uh, banana oatmeal cookie in there. And that Kylan Mini still rocks. It's still got really good flavor. Oh, yeah. I picked mine up from time to time. I, I think that was the first Kylan I got. And then whenever the V2 came out, I was super excited. And I've loved it. I just haven't yeah. used it as much. But I need to probably start using it again. So I'm going to start off with my kind of throwback. And it's more of my cheap beater box with uh, something a little new on it because – Mr. Sean Typhon, he's in chat right now, one of our moderators. He told me that Deep Cuts Dragon Shake is better in a single coil. So I've been using my Hermetic on top of my parallel box. Uh, it's a little Coil Art D Pro box. And oh, man, yeah. thing hits like a champ. 
the Hermetic, I really never really liked it, but for some reason, maybe it just didn't have the right flavors in it because I've been using the Gear, the Wash Nano, the uh, Hermetic. And I've been using some other single coil ones. I actually pulled out the uh, Kylan Mini after you said something about it yesterday. And I, I got yeah. it. I just haven't put any juice in it yet. And I'm like, man, maybe I need to start going back to some single coil stuff. So that's one thing I've really been hitting hard was that right there. Next is I have some sad boy strawberry cookie, uh, strawberry jam cookie. I have not been able to put this down. I keep telling myself, you know what? You need to put it down. You need to put it down. You need to try something different. And I haven't been able to put it down. And I have that inside my Dreamer LE, number 10 of 10, uh, with the Lucid RDA on top, all matching. Nice. I think that's a half moon mod tip. And I've really been just wanting to try out this because I haven't really – I've been wanting to experiment more with RDA, single coils, vertical coils, and a whole bunch of different things. So that's one of them. Another one's a new one that I just got in. It's the uh, Sub Ohm Innovation mod, little 18650. Yeah. And this thing hits like a champ. It's their competition mods, and it hits like a champ. They're on sale right now. If anyone wants them, go to their website and go get them. I got the Turk V2 on top of that. And I mean, dude, this thing hits. It's 18650. They had a huge 50% off sale going on. Oh, it's 70% off now. They oh, wow. Changed, they, yeah, they changed it. And then inside that, they got a psycho or I got psycho criller. Uh, Eric, I've been loving your juice, man. Um, next, I got the Axial on top of the Purge truck knurled. Really been liking this. I, inside that, I have some sad boy, oh, some sad boy uh, shamrock cookie. And what I've been doing is I've been switching off on this and some mint me. So I've been doing like a, a two days with mint me, two days with shamrock cookie, two days with mint me. And I'm telling you, I, I let my mint me really sit there and uh, steep really good for about two months. And I don't know, man, I'm thinking it might be better than some of that uh, shamrock cookie. The, the mint flavor on it, I think is a little bit better. I've really been enjoying it. So if y'all want some, any of that, go go hit up Mr. Clown Vapes. Yeah, Next, I got, I got my at-home setup. I've really been loving this. My Apocalypse 25 on top of my uh, Purge Twisted. Really been loving that. And inside that, I got some Sad Boy Butter Cookie. And then last, I have my – this is for you, Mr. Sammy Nitro. I got my <laughs> – <laughs> I got my Pro Unity on top of my um, Bonza mech from Vandy Vape. And inside that, I got some of this blueberry jam cookie. Been having to have it on this because I'm waiting on my Warlock's hammer to get back. And I've honestly really been liking it on this tube. I, I've, I've really been wanting to put something on this tube. And I was like, you know what? The Recoil Rebel would look cool on it. The RDA that came with it would look good on it. But you know what? This looks, this looks really good. I've really been liking it. So... <clears throat> That's all my setups. I know I had a bunch, but that's all my setups for this week. And um, one of the things I really wanted to kind of start this week out with was a big thank you to our sponsor. And we just got a sponsorship from uh, a buddy of ours, um, Clown Coils. So with that sponsorship, what we're going to be doing with that is we're not going to be sitting there doing giveaways every single week. We want to do giveaways, but we're not going to sit there and overdo it with giveaways. I yeah. don't want that to be the reason why everyone comes to this channel, but probably every other week or maybe every three weeks, you never know. I might do two back-to-back. -back. Me and Shane and Clown, we're going to sit down, we're going to talk about it, and we're going to figure out what we're going to do with it. But we are going to be doing some giveaways. So only way to know for doing a giveaway is I'm not going to post it on Instagram saying, hey, this week's a giveaway. You got to come into the show. If you're watching the replay, yep, show up. yeah. If you're watching the replay, I'm sorry. If it doesn't work at a convenient time, I'm sorry. I know this week we started a little bit earlier, um, but we are going to be doing all the giveaways inside the show. We might do some later on outside the show on Instagram and stuff like that. We might be doing something, but for right now, everything's going to be inside the show. So I want to give Clown a huge thank you and a huge shout out. If y'all don't follow him on Instagram or if you're not subscribed to him on YouTube yet, go do that. He does his DIY stream. I think it's every Monday. And then he does another one every Wednesday. 
I have him back. I think I have him backwards or whatever. But he does he does one Mondays. No, he does yeah DIY Monday, and then he does another stream on Wednesday where it's just his regular vlog, and then he puts yes. out reviews. I think at least once twice a week, and he does the Omis. So you're looking at a guy who puts out a lot of content. He's putting out at least and two, works a full time job. Yeah, uh, overnight. <laughs> I mean, he's yeah. He, it is, it's, he puts out at least three to four videos every week, plus on the Omis. So, I mean, he, mm -hmm. he, he's doing a lot. And he's been on here. Um, I've had him on here, I think, once. And I've talked to him a ton of times. But he's a really cool guy. But this is just something he wants to do to try to help out his stuff and try to help us grow too. But um, So, I mean, be on the lookout for that. You never know. We might throw in some Mint Me. We might throw in some Rectum Balls. We might, like James said, we might even throw in a full RDA and some cotton and everything and uh, get some clown coils and we might do a giveaway with that you never know but the only, mm -hmm. re the only way to get it is to come in here on the show and we might do some giveaways once we get to a certain amount of subscribers and stuff but that's later on so thank you clown and everyone hopefully i'll go follow him and go subscribe to him so now let's get into some advocacy topics like shane said taxing is one of the big things and this is one of the things that we talk about a lot is uh, the tobacco 21 and the taxing tobacco 21 is something that's uh, we don't want to talk about too much because we don't want to go oh hey yeah now texas is going for tobacco 21 now louisiana is going for tobacco 21 now this state's going for tobacco 21 because all we're going to do is talk about okay yeah they want to do tobacco 21 or they don't so what we're mainly going to do is talk about who doesn't want to and everything with tobacco 21 but taxing is a whole different thing because we can't just say okay oh well, yeah they're going to start taxing on this one because i think texas was like a 10 percent tax which wasn't honestly too much but then you look at places like colorado they beat like a 62 or 63 percent tax yeah and then you look at places like i think it was new york who did a 95 percent tax <laughs> yeah and then now Vermont, which, which is 92%. So, I mean, taxing something huge. And I know it's not all following on Texas or Alabama or stuff like that that's close to us, but whenever you see an Instagram post or you see something floating around on the internet about a 92% tax, I guarantee you, you're going to go click on it. 92% increase on a tax for a vaping product is outrageous. I've already talked about this before, but imagine if this RDA is $20. Say they put a 92% tax on it. So let's say it's around a hundred. They're gonna have to put this at forty dollars just to be able to pay for the taxes on it. Plus, they're not gonna make no money on it because they bought it for twenty dollars, they tax it for another twenty dollars. They're gonna have to put another twenty dollars on top of it or another ten dollars on top of it to try to make another to try to make somewhat a profit. Yeah. So they're gonna be selling an RDA they bought for ten dollars or for twenty dollars for sixty dollars just to be able to make a twenty dollar profit. That's outrageous. So I mean, and taxing is huge, and everyone's like, "Oh, okay, well, yeah." I mean, it's I mean, wholesale taxing might be, but what about the, the vape shop ones? Aren't that bad? No, they're going to be terrible because no one's going to go in there. Exactly. I mean, Your brick and mortars are really going to be extremely hurt by this. You know, you look at these guys, and they don't order in the volume that a lot of the other online suppliers do where they order you know your online whoever you use you know element vapor dna my v pro any of those guys you know they're ordering in the hundreds whenever they make an order for a single rda they're probably ordering at least a hundred at a time your normal brick and mortar may order 10 15 20 at the most so you got to think if they're doing volume pricing through their wholesaler which a lot of them do you're not going to get the lower price that these bigger online retailers do simply because it's uh or they're not going to be able to give us a lower price at the brick and mortar simply because they're paying a higher price to the wholesaler or the distributor so yeah. most people know that and i'm probably just preaching to the choir but the people that don't i wanted to kind of explain that how that worked yeah and i think the only thing that an actual brick and mortar store will go out there and they'll spend a hundred or buy a, a decent amount of product is juice. I think mm -hmm. that that's the only thing that they'll ever like, I've, I've seen a couple places where 
it's wholesale to the public. But then if you're like a actual company and you see, okay, $500 and then you get free shipping, I'm pretty sure a lot of the brick and mortars will actually spend that $500 and get however many bottles of juice just to be able to get that free shipping. But that's the only thing I can honestly think of a company actually doing because you can't, I mean, it, the company I work for, we, we deal with like raw materials like powders and oils and all these other different poly, uh, polymer materials. And whenever we sit on a product to our corporate company, which most of these brick and mortar stores are mom and pop stores, so they don't have no corporates and all this other stuff. But, but you're sitting on money that's not going anywhere that you pretty yeah. much you're, you're pretty much losing money by it sitting there. Cause I mean, if no one wants to buy it, what do you have to do? You have to drop the price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you might've dropped your profit margin in half. Say if you only sold 10 more, but you still have 10 left. Then you're, then you're trying to sell them at what you bought it at just to get it away, just to get it out of there. Then you're not making any money. And then if you go even lower than that, then you lost money on a product. So, I mean, mm -hmm. think about how bad this is going to hurt them because now they might just do something to where they have to, order right then and there they might have to do it to where they're like they might have to do it to where they're pretty much like your go-to place to order something if you don't want to, have to pick up your computer they might have to be like okay well yeah well you want this orion q let, let me let me go out there and i'll order it for you it'll be here in three days just so that way i don't have to sit on product in here and then yep. no one and then it, it just eventually hurt us in the long run they might have to eventually start doing that and that's one thing that just kind of came to my mind is this is really going to destroy how much product they can actually keep in. Cause I mean, my, my local brick and mortar, they used to, whenever a new RDA or whatever they wanted to carry, they tried to get at least five of it each color. So say if you have five colors, they get five of each. They're getting 25 RDAs right there. That's, that's going to last them at least two weeks. Cause when we, whenever a new product comes out and there, everyone's like, Oh my God, we got to get this. We got to get this. And then the next time they'll go off and see how fast it's sold to how fast they need it or how fast people are asking, hey, when are you going to get more? If no one's going in there for that, then they're not going to be ordering anything new. All they're going to do is just keep the same stuff they have, which is the liquids and the pods and the coils, because that's all people are going for, really. Yeah, that's so, what I mean, that's their big seller. You yeah, know, like you know, You're Sean has to told us, you know, Sean's told us in the past that the best shops are ones that cater to what they sell the most of or how they can help their patrons the best. You know, if you walk into a shop and it's all RDAs and mech mods, you know, they're not going to cater to a, a new uh, smoker trying to convert, uh, you know, and that makes it difficult for them because they can't carry everything, but, you know, they'll only be able to carry, you know, kind of what they know they can sell, which is, has to be understandable for everybody that walks in the door. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, the customers who don't look at it that way are going to probably get angry about it. They're going to sit there and say, well, they don't ever have anything in stock. Every time I try to go in there and get this RDA, they don't have it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because, I mean, if it wasn't selling well, why would they want to carry it? They right. want to carry what's actually making, not what's making them money, but what's satisfying the customer the best. And that's exactly. honestly what's going to help them out in the long run, too, with making the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're just, I mean, everyone says, oh, yeah, well, no one... Uh, no one has a vapor shop to make money. I mean, to me, I think it's a lie. I mean, I, I know a lot of people do it to help people out, but a lot of people do it to make money because, I mean, if that's your only source of income, you have to do it to make money. Exactly. And if you're not making money, then what are you doing? You're pretty much losing money on something that you're trying to pursue. So, I mean, yeah, yeah they, they open it to make money, but they also have to do what uh, uh, goes best towards the customer to make money. Like my local vapor store – they go off of trends, kind of like what Joel says all the time. Oh, I'm always looking for the next trend so that way I could be ahead of the game. They do the same thing. Back in 2014, 2000, late or early 2015, they only had mech mods and RDAs and a couple, like they had the, uh, I think that's when the Kanga Pro Tank came out and like stuff like that. But they had a lot of mech mods. They had a lot of RDAs. They had a lot of stuff like that. And then now you go and you, you walk in there you see maybe one RDA. There's no mech mods. There's a lot of smock products. There's a or smoke. There's a lot of uh, geek vape products like the Aegis Legend and the Aegis Mini. And there's a lot of juice and there's a lot of uh, Nick salts and pods. And then you got all your other coils and everything. 
but you you may you maybe might see one RDA in there, and that's just because he's like, okay, this is the one RDA that sells real well. I'm gonna keep that one RDA for that person who might want an RDA, or I'm gonna keep this one uh, RTA. I think he actually keeps one RTA in stock or whatever, but that's all he'll keep in stock just because he knows it won't sell well and, it, and there's no one coming in here for it. I mean, honestly, if it's not selling well, then it's not getting to the customer as good. Right. You're saying. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no point in having it if you can't sell it. Yeah. So, you know, and that's what people have to, uh, the, the consumer like myself, that's what we have to understand. They're not just going to keep something in there just to have it on their shelf. Mm-hmm. You know, they may have one, you know, say the guy's a really big mech guy that owns the store. He may go out and buy a hammer of God just to keep it there for a display, but it's his, you know, so he may sell it, you know, he may not, but he just may want to keep it there just to say, Hey, check out this giant mod and see what it'll do. I don't, you know, something like that. I would think it's more of kind of a novelty. Yeah, but, you know, I don't blame them for not having a, a huge selection, especially, you know, in a town like mine, you know, we're only probably six, seven thousand people. Mm-hmm. So the store here, you know, they have like four display cases and it may have 15, 20 products in there. So but they're there just in case you do need something. You know, they have all the coils and, you know, stuff like that that you may need. But as of new products, no, nah, they're not going to have a lot. Yeah, and I don't blame them at all because they're not going to sell it. Yeah, because that's like my town. I I'm, I live in a real small town too. I think we're like maybe four or five. We're we're growing, so we're getting closer to five. And our shop sees it. They're like, man, we're gonna have to get some more display places because like they have this big like bar area where you could sit behind. And we used to sit there and just make coils and spin wire and do whatever we wanted back whenever we could do stuff like that. And they could actually help us out with making coils. And we used to sit there and do that all the time. And that's what they mainly had it for. Now it's just for them to sit back and no one else is really allowed back there. And uh, like, like you were saying is the small town that that's all they carry is the stuff that pertains to the customer. But then you go 40 miles down the road to a bigger town of Arlington, Texas, where like you have the Cowboy stadium, the Rangers stadium and stuff like that. And it's I I can't remember exactly. I think it might be thirty thousand or something like that. There's there's a bunch of people there, and there's lots of food places, lots of places to eat. There's stores that actually or vape shops that actually carry mech mods like Purge and everything. So I mean it's 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 all on where you're at on what you can carry. Because I mean like the place where I my fiance got me that Purge, they're a competition store. They cater to the people who like to do competitions, who do cloud comps, who do. Uh, coil building and everything like you can go in there and you can buy spools of wire and it's just it's almost the opposite of what the store in my town is because they have rdas they have uh purge mods they have um what's the other one i I know they had a couple of death wish mods and they had a couple other uh mech mods in there that are really cool and they had some uh av mods in there too but then they have a bunch of different liquids and everything, and they have coils, cotton, uh, pre-made coils, wire you can buy. But it's almost the exact opposite because they carried little amount of pods and starter kits and stuff like that. And, I mean, it's, it's all just about where you're at and catering to your customers. Because, I mean, honestly, whatever makes you money and helps you keep on the lights is what you should keep doing. Exactly. And the you know back to the subject here is is the tax and how that's going to affect these people, you know these small business you know brick and mortar vape shops, you know they're they're going to have to downsize, mm-hmm. you know and I and I hate it for those guys and I don't want anybody to lose their their income or their job or you know livelihood however you want to say it, you know it, it's heartbreaking for everyone, you know because we don't know these people. You know, most time you walk in a vape shop, you see somebody 20 to 30. You know, I would say about that average around here. I can't say that for everywhere, but that's normal for around here. And, you know, but you don't know the owner. The owner could be, you know, in his 40s with kids and a wife. And, you know, they have all these other bills that they have to pay. So, you know, they would have to start running that shop kind of on their own. You know, if taxes like that go through because, 
they wouldn't be able to afford to have the younger people come in and do it for them. So, you know, in turn, that's going to take time away from their family and make them stay gone just to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that really bothers me because, you know, I work a lot and I know you do too. And, you know, we both have, you know, family that we like to spend time with and we like to do things with. And I, you know, I don't want anybody to miss out on those kind of things. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of tags, I just thought of this. Imagine how much a purge mod would be after if we had a 90% tax. Oh, yeah. It'd be un totally unreasonable. It, it'd be close to $1,000 for a $300 mod. Yeah. And honestly, I, I don't even want to spend 300 That's why someone bought it for me for my birthday. But $1,000 for a mod? Talk about high end. I mean, the high end market's going to shoot up like crazy and stand oh, yeah. in a swagons are going to have some fun with that. Yeah. They'd have to get second and third, fourth jobs just to support their high end habit. Mm hmm. But yeah, so back onto the topic about taxes, like, like you're talking about is we, I know we can't do everything to help everyone out, but Vermont right now, I know they're the big one that's going through a really high tax. There's everyone else. All these other States are going through super high taxes. But Vermont, theirs is, I think, 92%, 93%. So, I mean, anyone out in Vermont, if you are watching or if you know people out in Vermont, if you have family out in Vermont that doesn't even smoke, vape, or anything, talk to them. Get them to write a letter in there. Uh, let them under – tell them why. And, I mean, even like something like uh, MTurk did. He didn't live in uh, Nevada, but he was still picking addresses in Nevada saying, oh, sorry, I mean, I'm picking this address because – this is something that we can't have go through. Go on there and try to register and send a letter in. Send a, even if you don't live there, send a letter to them saying, hey, man, well, I mean, I know I'm from Texas, but this is something that really can't be done. I mean, if you do this, look, think about the industry. Think about what you're going to hurt. Think about how many people you are going to kill. And, I mean, it's not going to kill them right away, but four, over 480,000 people die every year. That's almost half a million. I guarantee you if – they did a hundred percent tax across the across the board, or ninety percent tax across the board, or even a fifty percent tax across the board nationwide. I guarantee you that number would go up over half a million, easy. So I mean, there's there's a lot of things we could do to save a lot of lives, but it's just going out there and actually taking the time to do something for it and do something to help it out. So I mean, we I know we don't live in Vermont, and I know uh, Shane doesn't live in Vermont, but there's so much we can still do to help out is by doing like this little show right here, trying to get the word out to people. Someone might hear it. That's from Vermont. Or someone might hear it that has a, a relative in Vermont. Hell, send them a letter, talk to them, call them, pick up the phone, tell them, Hey, call your representative. They're about to send a huge tax down there. You never know. Your kids one day might be a smoker and they might want to vape and they might, they, I mean, if they're smokers at the age of 16, 17, and when they turn 18, they say, you know what? I want to quit smoking. I want to vape. Well, you can't do it if you're not 21, if that law goes through. And then whenever they do want to vape, they're going to have to be spending outrageous amounts of money just to try to do it. And it's right. going to it's gonna take so many more people away from trying to vape and trying to quit and keep them on cigarettes. So, I mean, this is something that we're really going to have to keep pushing. And like like you said, Texas won their battle with their uh, – with um, was HB 4013. We beat that bill, but I mean, the war is never over. The fight is never over. This is, this is a big long battle that we have to keep going through. It's not like it's, we finished that one and okay, yeah, we're done. Kind of like the Scott Godlip thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's out of office. Let's dust our hands off. We're good to go. Let's go celebrate. Yeah. Let's have a nice little celebration, maybe a day or two. Let's talk about it. Let's have fun with it. Yeah. We beat the bill as a whole state. But we can't sit back and wait for the next one. We have to be on our toes. We'd to be ready. Like Shane says all the time, he doesn't have anything big going on in Alabama, but yet he's always on his toes ready for it. So that way when it yeah. does come, he can hit it before it hits him. That's always something that everyone, everyone needs to pay attention to and always, always something everyone needs to look at that way is stay on your toes. I know whenever I, every sport, basketball, football, baseball – your ready position is always on your toes, never on your heels. Don't let them catch you on your heels because they'll just push you right on your butt. Make sure you stay on your toes. Yep. And I was looking at, uh, I was trying to find the latest update on uh, what taxes are where. 
you know, the, the latest one I can find was from January of 2018, which is over a year old, but it shows, let's say there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10, just on this map. And the smallest one is in Kansas and it's five cents a milliliter. But one of the highest ones is in Pennsylvania at 40% of wholesale. Yeah. And then, well, actually Minnesota is 95% of wholesale. Yeah, that's Already. something I was looking for too. I was looking for like a map or maybe just even state to state. So one thing I was going to do is I was going to print out a a map or something and just write in there taxes if it's beat or if it's not and right. what taxes we're looking at so that way we can have a better visual of it. Maybe I could share that with everyone else. I could put maybe put a link in there, put it on the Discord and put it everywhere else cuz I mean when you just hear about it it's 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 not really a big thing, but when someone shows you a picture of how many states are actually fighting a tax battle on who's fighting tax or tobacco 21 tobacco 19 who's uh who's fighting what if you put that on a map and you, so, and you show it to everyone it makes the picture even bigger and it makes everyone's eyes open up even more to what's actually going right. on and that's one thing i want to do because that's one thing i want to share with like places like my company i want to show them i want to show like uh my my legislators and all my representatives so that way maybe they can get a better understanding of what this actual community is actually fighting we're not sitting there we're not sending letters for no reason we're fighting because it's not just one state is fighting it the whole nation is it's state to state and there's nationwide stuff going on all day every day right let's see here's a let's see when was this one updated uh well this one don't have a date uh, but this one actually goes into a lot more detail about uh you know it shows you know alaska is has some municipal areas and it lists the municipal areas california delaware illinois has chicago and cook county kansas louisiana maryland Minnesota, New Jersey, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, D.C., West Virginia. And it talks about there's uh, legislators in 20 states have introduced tax bills during the 2019 legislative uh, session. Among them are a 92 percent wholesale tax in Vermont and 86 percent tax in Utah. Mm -hmm. So that's two of the bigger ones that are that are going on. Yeah. Uh, I'll shoot. This one even goes into internationals. Greece, Hungary, Indonesia. It gives all of those. When did you say those were last updated? Uh, I was looking for a date, and I don't see one on this site. Let me see if it's at the bottom. I mean, if, even if it, even if it's not that closely updated, I mean, it's still got old people's eyes. You can go ahead and put that link in the uh, chat on YouTube if you want, so that way everyone can yeah. hold up too. Oh, this was February of February 2019, so it's yeah. not that old. Yeah, that's not too bad right there. And that's honestly stu like oh, stuff like that is going to help. Wants, that way everyone yeah. Oh, there it goes again. <laughs> but I mean like there there's so much that could open people's eyes and it's it's I won't say it's easy, but it a, a picture opens people's eyes more than an article. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. If someone sees a picture like uh and one of the people I always want to give huge credit to for pictures opening people's eyes is Mr. Vinyl and Vapor, the guy who makes deep cuts right here. If you haven't tried his juice, his juice is amazing. Go pick y'all some up. But follow him on Instagram. His post opened my eyes so much to such small things that are like, okay, yeah, I mean, I guess it could do this. But then when he draws a picture of it, of what it kind of represents to him, it makes you get a better understanding of what's actually going on. But yeah, taxes are no joke, no matter where you live. I mean, if you go look on uh, Vaping Magazine or Vape News Magazine, you go look at all the articles, I guarantee you every three articles or every four articles are going to be talking about taxes or Tobacco 21. And like, I mean, there's even a state, where was it? There's a state that's uh, pushing for Tobacco 19. So, I mean, you got... You, there's so many different things that we have going on. I mean, we have a nationwide that's, that's talking about tobacco 21. We have state to state that's talking about tobacco 21. We got states that are fighting it saying, no, we're not going to do it. And then we have states that are saying, yes, we're going to do it. And then you even have states that say, okay, yeah, we're going to, well, we, we're going to do tobacco 19. 
it's just crazy how much we all can't get. I don't know. How, I don't know how, we all can't get on the same page as a whole nation. We have to do everything state to state. It should be all one nation. Like just like the pledge yes. of allegiance, and everything. It should all be together. Because I mean, even I, I know gun laws are different. And everything. I mean, this isn't really as irrelevant. But I mean, in Texas, there's way different gun laws than there is like in New York or other states. I mean, one thing, whenever you take your uh, license to carry here is uh, you you pretty much because it's not like a, it's not like a seal handgun license because it's a license to carry because here you have open carry and you have uh concealed carry so i mean there's so much stuff that they teach you in that class right there where they're like hey well i mean you can sign up for these people they will fight any case for you and they send you updates and you can call them if you're traveling to figure out what states you can and can't have your guns in and it's just like so crazy that you would have to call and they'd be like, okay, hey, yeah, well, if you're going through this state, this state, and this state, this state, you can have your gun with you. This state, it has to be in the back seat. It can't be within arm's reach. This state, it has to be unloaded. This state, it can be loaded. I mean, in Texas, as long as you're 21, you don't have to have a license. You could have a loaded gun in your car with you as long as it's on your property, which is in your car or in your house. And it could be loaded, ready to go. But then you go to other yeah. states, you can't even have a knife on you. And I, yeah. Yeah. Like uh, a pocket knife. I think I think it's London or something like that or Paris where you can't eat. They can't they can't even have knives, so they pickpocket. And they, I mean, I've had some friends go down there and get pickpocketed, and they was uh, they said it's, they they're, they're really good at it. They lost their phone, their watch, their everything. <laughs> oh yeah, well that's but like I mean, you saw the videos whenever they did the Olympics. I think it what was it Brazil. Mm-hmm. Where they were just they were just walking up, snatching and running from the people. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and then like right here we got Nebraska where it's uh to ba- or uh pushing towards vape nineteen. So you have to be nineteen years old to vape. Yeah, it's that way in Alabama now. Yeah, and I think uh, Lady Louisiana, she, where she lives in Kansas, doesn't she? I think so. She uh she was talking to someone yesterday and they're like, oh yeah, well I, I was vaping and then now. The laws changed to 21, so I can't vape no more. And she was like, well, okay, well, I mean, you're not getting any of my stuff. I'm, I'm over 21, you're not, you're going to have to wait. But, I mean, that does suck. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, someone who vapes, and then they have to pretty much go back to killing their cells by smoking cigarettes. I mean, it's your own choice. You don't have to. But if you're looking for a nicotine fix, what's the first thing you're going to do? Hey, I can't vape, but I can smoke cigarettes. Or hey, I can't vape or smoke cigarettes, but hey, what's the easiest one to get and conceal? A cigarette. Right. You might smell exactly. like it, but it's the easiest <laughs> one because I mean you're not gonna blow out big clouds. I mean, even a, a pod system mm. blows out bigger clouds than uh, a cigarette. <sighs> so I mean, we got all these different laws, not even just tobacco, but vaping laws, where they're talking about tobacco twenty one, but vaping nineteen. I mean, that would I mean, it, there, there's a big push on that that I'm not still too sure of. I mean, I'm I'm for. I mean, if, if you if you can go fight for your country, everyone says they're. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm against it or with it. Yeah, I understand. Kids are dumb. If they want to vape, they want to vape. They're gonna do it no matter if we tell them they can't or they can't. But I mean, it's it's just. Like there's some stores out there trying to go to 21. I mean, do they really think that's going to help with the big thing, with the big picture? Yeah, you, they might not be able to get it from that store, but they can walk right next door to a little drug store or a little uh, gas station and pick it up, or their little local corner store. Yeah, and I mean, you know, like I said, there's a place here close to me where the guy in there will sell to anybody. Yeah. And I've gone in there and I've gone in there and confronted him and it doesn't make any difference. So I'm probably going to start reporting him pretty soon. Yeah. I mean, so. that, I mean, I, I don't want to say that's the best or I, I'm not saying it's the worst thing to do, but there's certain measures you have to take whenever it comes to this. Cause I mean, this just by him doing that isn't just affecting the people that it's happening to or the people who are buying it. It's affecting you yourself. Because then your town or your city can actually go on and say, hey, well, we're going to go Tobacco 21 since we can't get people to pay attention. 
I mean, I think about the people that with the three year difference right there, who's that's really going to hurt. I mean, it's it's not it's it's doing that your best deed. If you see someone doing something wrong, confront them about that. If they don't want to listen, then confront someone else about it, or give it uh, put it in someone else's hands to confront them about it. Because I mean, honestly, stuff like that is why we're going through all these laws why we're going through tobacco 21, why we're going through all this tax increase. Cause they're saying that they're trying to tax it, which we all know they're trying to tax it to make money, but they're saying they're trying to tax it. So that way they can get teens off of it. No, they're just going to get more money from the teens that are on there. So, I mean, stuff like that is stuff that I hate seeing. I mean, I, I know it happened whenever I was younger, I was able to buy chewing tobacco, cigarettes, beer sometimes, but I mean, it's it's just crazy how now when you're older you're like, yeah, that's something that we really need to uh, put put uh, get get out of here with. Because I mean, whenever I was younger, I was always like, man, why can't you sell it to me? I, I mean, I look 21. Yeah. Now I'm like, okay, well, I'm actually 21 now. Yeah, or I'm over 21. So now, yeah, I mean, it, it's you shouldn't be doing that. I mean, yeah. I've, had, I've had kids ask me, hey man, can you buy me some beer? Back when I was younger, I might have. Now I'm like, no. Sorry. Yep. I got a family. I got a job. I'm not trying to go to jail. No. Yep. And then, hey, well, can you buy me a, a can of snuff? Nope. Sorry. Can you go buy, can you go buy in there and uh, buy me some vape juice? Nope. Sorry. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and buy something for someone that's against the law. I mean, whenever I was younger and more rebellious, maybe. Now, no. Yeah. I have a bigger picture in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's different when you get the bigger picture. When uh, I think somebody we were talking about it at work the other day, we're trying to adult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, and thank you for putting that link in there, Shane. So this next one I want to talk about, let me pull it up so I can drop the link in there also. Um, I want to talk about this one right here for Walmart going tobacco 21. Last week we talked about Walgreens going tobacco 21 yeah. but now it's walmart and someone said it uh i think it was in the vape stew and i was like no they must be talking about walgreens and then i pulled up the thing i'm like oh now walmart did it and i mean it's yeah. it's just crazy how I, I know walmart wasn't a big seller i mean the, at least the walmarts i've been going to and i talk i actually i think i commended them the last time when we were talking about uh, Walgreens, I'll have to go back and look, but I think I commended them for how well they do with um, checking IDs. I mean, I know for alcohol yes. at least, and I know whenever I used to buy tobacco, I mean, no matter how old I looked, they always checked my ID and whoever was with me's ID. And there was yeah. one time I had a buddy with me who was like 16, and I think I was taking him hunting or something like that, and he's like, uh, they wouldn't sell me a can of snuff because of that. Yeah, because he was with you. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I mean, I, I mean, I, I was a little bit older, so I wasn't going to sit there and make a big fuss. Like when I was, when I was 18, I probably would, oh man, this is stupid. Y'all are dumb. Now I'm yeah. like, okay, yeah, I understand. I, I completely understand. I'm not going to sit there and make a big fuss about it. But I honestly don't see why all these places are doing this. I mean, it's not going to change anything, especially for someone who's already been doing a good job of it. I mean, right. maybe they're just trying to get ready for if there is a nationwide tobacco 21. Mm-hmm. But then, I mean, honestly, I, I still don't see why they're doing it now. I mean, nothing's been set in stone for all the states, but, I mean, it's not my decision or anything. But I honestly wouldn't have done this until it's a nationwide thing, but that's just me. Right. Well, the I think the government, the United States government, has left that smoking law, you know, up to the states. You know, they say – U.S. says it's a minimum of 18, but if any state wants to make it higher than that, then they're allowed to. Yeah. You know, I, I think Alabama, Utah, and I think Alaska are the ones that were 19 already. Now, I don't know if anybody else has moved up to that or is in the process of moving up to that, but, you know, it is what it is. And I, and I understand there's a lot of things that are going to change with this and, we just kind of have to roll with the punches on age changes. You know that we can try to fight it, but there's nothing we can really do about it. 
uh, even as a whole. And I, I hate to say that because I want people to fight and I want people to, to voice their opinion about it, but I'm not sure if the state deems it 21, then it's probably going to happen. Uh, whether we really agree with it or not. Uh, and that's something we just kind of have to roll with the punches on a lot of that stuff. You know, as long as they're not taking it away from everyone as a whole, I think there's a lot of stuff that we're going to have to compromise on. Yeah. I mean, it's all, I mean, it's all about adapting, but we also, like you said, need to still fight and try to change their mind. But it's all honestly about adapting to the situations yeah. that we're put in. I mean, that's that's what everyone does with life in general is you adapt. You get fired from your job. What are you going to do, sit there and just and just cry about it? No, you're going to adapt. You're going to go find a new job. If they change a law, what are you going to do? You're going to have to adapt no matter what. I mean, we could sit there and fight it, but we're still going to have to adapt to it. That's just yeah. like my town. We, we got a new city ordinance person. They never told us anything about it. We're all still having to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. There's all these different new things that they want us to do, and I mean, it's 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 just how we. It's just what you have to do as a as a human being in the United States now. But I mean, um, unlike Rite Aid and CVS, yeah. So I mean, like Walgreens, they're I mean, uh, Walmart, they're not trying to pull all their products. They want to keep their tobacco. They want to keep the cigarettes. They want to keep all that because they know they're making money off of it. But they're they're just making it to where it's a you have to be a certain age now to buy it. Now um like Wal or uh who is it? Um I think 7 Eleven said that I was in there the other day and I was like, oh y'all still sell jewel products. They said yeah. And I think they said that they were about to change theirs to 21. They they just got all new signs. And one of the things I saw was they had all these new signs. And I said, well, why does that say 21? They said, oh, I think that we're about to do a big 21 thing. They said for right now, they order us all new signs for um, IDing. Like they, they have a mat in front of them that says, hey, we ID. Don't buy for someone else. It's against the law and it's not worth it. Pretty much is what it says. And right. then now they also have these new ones that they pulled out of the back the other day whenever I was up there. And they said something about, oh, well, Tobacco 21. I was like, oh, so I think that they're going to Tobacco 21 also. So I don't know where all 7-Elevens are located. I'm pretty sure they're located everywhere. But, I mean, that's one of the things that I saw is I think that they're about to go Tobacco 21 or at least maybe just in Texas because that's one of the things I saw. I mean, it's it's not just Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, all of those people. They're actually uh, trying to do it in more places. So, I mean, it might be just a convenience store thing now that they're going to do. But, I mean, kids are still going to be able to get it. I, oh, I, yeah. No, they'll, they'll figure out a way. Yeah, because, I mean, all these little corner stores, like in my town, we have – a corner store that's a re that's a restaurant inside of it. I guarantee you they'll sell it to someone. We have one down the road that's like uh, not even a minute from it. They have always sold it to people, and I used to always get it from them. <laughs> yeah, we have two gas stations that we used to always be able to go to, or at least one of them whenever a buddy was working. And then now I think we're opening up another one right next to our actual vapor shop. And our, I mean, I want to give our vapor shop a huge. Uh, shout out because I mean they are they've been like really cracking down on people who are too young like this kid came in there the other day and it was a while back and he said hey I'm picking up this for my dad and they said okay well uh, I need to see your ID and he was like oh wow it's just it's just for my dad y'all know my dad they're like yeah we know your dad you come in here with him every now and then and he'll pick up what he needs and leaves but he doesn't sit there and let you hang out in here for more than like two minutes. He just grabs what he needs and goes. And then he's like, well, I'm just picking it up for him. He sent me his card and everything. And he said he was going to call. They're like, well, we haven't got a call and we can't, even if we did, we can't sell it to you. Right. And then made him leave. And then like uh, the, well, one of the other things I want to commend is the other shop that sells the purge mods down the road for me. Um, it's Southern cloud cartel, uh, vapor connection. I believe they, uh, th they, didn't want to sell the purge mod to my fiance because they asked her if she knew what she was doing. <laughs> and she, I mean, honestly, that's something really good. They were like, well, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. sure you know what you're doing. 
And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no clue what the hell this is, but it's expensive. I mean, she's like, well, I'm getting it for him. And they're like, well, are you sure he knows what he's doing? <laughs> but the same time, that same day, I went in there with another mech mod and they didn't question me one bit on, hey, do you know what you're doing? I guess because the way I was talking about it and the what I showed them I had and what yeah. I was saying and everything, they kind of knew. And I've talked to them before and I was going to actually interview them once for one of these weekend wisdoms. And I mean, they, they kind of already knew I already knew what I was doing, but someone like that little lady goes in there and says, Hey, well, I want to buy this. And they're like, Hey, well, I mean, are you sure? I mean, that's something I don't, I know that'd be a big amount of cash for us. It's over $300 right there that we can make on you. But are you sure you know what you're doing? We don't want you to get hurt. That's something I really want to commend someone on. Cause I mean, $300 for a regular vapor store is selling a lot of juice and a lot of starter kits or at right. least four or five starter kits. They can make that off of one mech mod. Yeah. And they pretty much stopped her and said, no, well, I mean, maybe you should wait. Maybe are you sure he knows what he's doing? Are you, do you know what you're doing? And that's something I really want to commend them on is being safe. Cause I mean, oh, we yeah. did have that death here in Texas. It wasn't at that shop. It wasn't nowhere near them, but that's something that they kind of took into consideration is we don't want to be liable for someone getting hurt. Yeah. And that's something yeah, they I don't really want to tell them that they're good at. It's not really that they, nobody could really hold them liable, but yeah. they don't want that on their conscience. And I fully understand that. Yeah. You know, I would be in the same boat if somebody, you know, if I was selling something to somebody and, you know, I would always ask, do you, do you know how to use this? Are you familiar with your Ohm's law? You know, that'd be my first question. Yeah. That's like on the three amigos the other day, I asked them, I said, uh, that's when they had uh, Squid Industries on there. And I said, hey, well, do, do y'all plan on coming out with a uh, with a uh, mech mod? I was like, That'd be pretty cool. And they said, no. They said, uh, Chuck said no. The representative said no. He said, nope. We aren't going to be liable for something like that. We can sit there and preach what we want, but doesn't mean everyone's going to still pay attention to it. So, no. They said, we have one mod that does bypass mode, and that's good enough. I say, I mean, I understand. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, that's stupid. Y'all can make so much money. Y'all can do so good with a mech mod. They they understand what it what it could do to them. And what, I mean, honestly, I mean, even I think the kid who died in Texas, I don't even think they actually said what mod it was, but I'm pretty, it was a mech mod, but they never even said the brand or anything. So, I mean, it's not like they're going to go out there and be like, okay, yeah, well, Squid Industries uh, mech mod blew up and they're going to put that all over the news, but they still don't want that on their conscious that hey well someone died because of one of our mods and I, that's that, that's something that's really good too i mean don't get into something that you don't know too much about or you don't know enough about to where you might have questions and everything for it um but yeah like like we were saying i mean i think me and you both agree on this is it's not really gonna change much by a couple of retailers going to tobacco 21 by themselves in their stores right i mean walmart's a big one you mm -hmm. know they're they're making the move then a lot of the other smaller folks are going to make the move also oh yeah uh, you know that's that's kind of like the same way the states roll you know you watch uh new york and california will pass a law and then you know it'll trickle down to the smaller states after that and, uh, you know, one thing, uh, not to go back to taxes, but it was just still on my mind. I actually found all the tobacco tax per state. So, and I'd love to, I'm going to sit here and do some research and do a comparison on the states that actually have a tax on vapor products mm -hmm. to see what the difference is. Because like Minnesota, you know, they're at 95% of wholesale, but their tobacco tax is only $3. Yeah. And that's that's per pack. So you gotta think if you buy a you know hundred mil of e liquid, that's mm. gonna last you a whole lot more than a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. You know, back when I was smoking, I was smoking a pack and a half a day. So, you know, I mean, you're looking at this probably last me. Well, we'll look at the shamrock cookie because I use it a lot more. I'll go through a hundred mil in probably two weeks, easy. So, you know, 50 meals a week. So that was taxed at 95%. You know, uh, I, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do the math and I'll, you know, we'll cover that on another episode. I just think that'll be good to look at 
to see the difference because you know that 95% tax is going to be well above what they're taxing for tobacco. And I don't understand the difference. If they want to group us all together, then if you're going to tax us, tax us all together. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. What's what's the purpose? You're, you're taxing uh, in Minnesota. You're taxing them. I almost guarantee you well more with the vapor products than you are with tobacco. And tobacco kills you. Vapor saves you. That's yeah. just my opinion. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, it's just crazy that, that that's one thing also I've wanted to always bring up is how are you going to put us in the same bracket, but yet you're going to tax us separately? Yeah. That's like saying, okay, well, yeah, well, you have vodka and you have whiskey, but we're going to put a 5% tax on whiskey and a 13% on vodka. No, it's the same thing. It's alcohol. Now, I know vaping and smoking is not the same thing, but if you want to put us in the same bracket, tax is the same. I guarantee you they don't want to do that because of the big pharma and FDA linking and all this other stuff. But I'm, I mean, big pharma and big tobacco and everything linking and everything. But I mean, I guarantee that's one reason why they don't want to. But I mean, it's 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 a valid point you just brought up. Is why are you going to tax it separately? And one of the things yeah. I saw on this uh, Walmart uh, one was that they had. Uh, 13,000 compliance checks at their local retailer at, at all these local retailers, right? You know how, what the percentage was that they passed 93% of them passed. Wow. So, I mean, that that's 7%. I mean, 7% failure rate. That's, that's pretty good. And honestly, yeah. I guarantee you it's cause I mean, they hire pretty young too there. They probably hired someone young. There's probably a buddy who came up there. Hey man, I, I, I just wanted to buy a pack of cigarettes. I know I'm out of age, but I mean, you're my friend, right? Well, you can get it for me, right? And yeah. Did it. I Hook guarantee. Up, you, brother. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you this would around how it went around, but I mean, that that's something that's really good, but their their company they it says right here um that their company goal is 100% compliance check. And it says um even a single sale to a minor is one too many. And mm -hmm. we take we take uh, seriously our responsibility in that in this regard. That's something that I can live with. You want to go Tobacco Twenty One as a company because you're saying that okay, if we up this age, that they will have to check it or something, which I still don't see it happening. But I mean, if that's your goal, go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to buy from them anyway, tobacco products. But I mean, that, I mean, I know they sell a good amount of tobacco products because at night, that's the one line that's only open besides yeah. self checkout. And I see a lot more people going to that line, not just because it's, they don't have to do their own checkout. It's mainly because they're buying tobacco product. And with a hundred percent compliance uh, goal, I mean, that that's something that's really good to shoot for, for them. So, I mean, mm -hmm. this is one of the ones I'm not going to sit there and bash too much because I mean, they actually do have a goal of what they want to hit. It's not just because, oh, well, I mean, we see the epidemic. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we understand that. Get out of yeah. here with all that. <laughs> yeah, no, move on because it's mm -hmm. not true. <clears throat> um, and give up, give up on the flavors to attract kids because it doesn't. They just want to get high. Yeah. So one of the next topics I want to talk about was um, ah, flavor bands. Everyone saw that, didn't y'all? I'm wearing pants and I'm I'm on YouTube. No one wears pants <laughs> on YouTube. But uh, one of the things I want to talk about was flavor bands. I'm not standing up simply for that same reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, flavor bands, and I mean, I know uh, the come or the state that's having the most issue with it is California, and I think San Francisco is the biggest uh, city that's going through it. And it was a six to or oh, okay six to one vote against the ban. So I mean that's really good, but I mean it's it's still a big topic because I mean honestly I didn't get into vaping because of this. I, I didn't get into vaping because of all this other stuff. I wanted to, I got into vaping because you don't have to have just your two flavors. Like with chewing tobacco, you have. Well, now you got a couple flavors, but whenever I first started, well, I mean, no, there still was a lot. There's peach. There's all these different flavors. Yeah. I mean, it's still tobacco. When you're a smoker, 
you don't really get that many flavors. You get menthol, regular, and you get like a bolder flavor. Yeah. And then you get your lighter flavors and stuff like that. But I mean, it's still the exact same flavor. The only real other different flavor you have is like a menthol or like a southern blend, which isn't really much of a different flavor. It's still just a tobacco flavor. So, I mean, that's that's something why a lot of people went to smoking or went from smoking to a vapor product is because, one, it doesn't taste like ass. Two, you don't smell like ass. And, I mean, they're trying to take it away from us. So, this is one thing that everyone should be really looking out for. Yeah, taxes are really important, but I mean, if they, if they only take away your flavors, I mean, Shane, if they take away your, uh, was it uh, your transmission or was it merge? Yeah. They take away that or they take away your uh, sad boy, are you going to be pretty pissed off? Well, yeah. And but you, then again, with the position that we're in, with the position we're in, we'll still be able to find it. Yeah. Because yeah. we have people that we know that can help us out and show us how to DIY or they'll DIY it for us. And, you know, it'll be kind of an under the table deal. The, the people that I'm worried about most are the people that are still smoking or are in the process of quitting. If you're on this and you're on probably a month of this, you're going to be ready for something else. Oh yeah. You know, and that's where they're going to lose the people. Yeah, because I mean, after, sure. after about a month of this, you're going to say, okay, this is not enough anymore. Or, you know, I just want something different. I need, I need something more. So, yeah, for, like for me, it's not even as much as the throat hit that I like. It's more the dense cloud that satisfies me more. And everyone, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, James brought it up too. Is uh, the dense cloud is what, is what satisfied him. Um, <laughs> see, I'm breaking the rules. YouTubers can't wear pants. But yeah. see, it, I don't even really like a throat hit. Yeah, I like and, it really smooth. Mm -hmm. And that dense cloud, like there's some babes where, like uh, this apocalypse, I had a coil in it that I really didn't like, and I wasn't getting that dense of a cloud. So I was like, man, maybe it's just the RDA. It's like, you know what? Let me try a different coil. So I ordered some more coils and I put them in there, and now the cloud is really dense and heavy. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's honestly what satisfies me more i could probably honestly i could probably go no nicotine i don't want to but i know i probably could but yeah. just the dense cloud itself helps me right there and i mean uh like going from jewel if all they have is tobacco flavors which i know they're going to start doing some stupid ones like oh tobacco apple or tobacco pear and just throw yeah. a drop of tobacco yeah Whatever you mean, vanilla that. tobacco. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if they honestly stuck to the rules and did the tobacco flavors, whether it's a regular tobacco and a menthol tobacco and a mint tobacco or whatever they want to put in there, just the tobacco flavors, why would someone quit smoking just to go back to the same flavors they had? Right. There's no point. I mean, yeah. And honestly, that's one of my selling points on switching people over is, well, I mean, like, what flavor can I put in it? What flavor do you like? I don't yeah. know. Well, what do you, what's your favorite drink? Well, I mean, I like pina colada. I mean, that's one of my favorite drinks. I like them in energy drinks. I like them in like just uh, flavored waters. You can get a pina colada vape. Yeah. What if I want strawberry? You can get strawberry. What if I want strawberry nectarine and this and that? You can get that. What if I want, um, what if I want this or that? You can, you can honestly go to a brick and mortar store that still mixes their juices in house. And they can put together for you whatever you want. You can put peanut butter with chocolate with uh, tobacco. You could put peanut butter with chocolate with anything. You can put any yeah. flavor you can possibly think of that they have in their store with it, and they can make it to wherever you want. Right. And, you know, think about the people like me. I'm a diabetic, so mm -hmm. I can't have a lot of sweets. So, you know, the shamrock cookie, you know, the vanilla latte, that, that kind of thing. I can't have coffee like I like it. You know, I can't have coffee with sugar and creamer and all that stuff. If I want it, I got to drink it black. And I'm not a huge fan of black coffee. So I can actually take this vaping and I can get my sweet fix because I get the flavor from it. And it helps me not to eat sweets. Because, I mean, I'm 
you know, 6'2", 6'3", 250, 260. So I do like to eat. So, and, you know, that's helped me a lot with my blood sugar, just simply having the sweets that I could vape. And it makes a huge difference for me. And it may help other diabetics, you know, and they, you know, flavor bands will be taking that away to where you couldn't offer that to somebody. Now, it, not saying that it's going to be or will be a health benefit because I don't, don't think it will be, but it may help. You never know. Yeah. So you're telling me you can't have a, pr- a pumpkin frappuccino when it's fall time <laughs> from Starbucks? No. I Man. Well, I'm also not that basic white person. I don't do pumpkin. <laughs> Me and James are crying <laughs> for you, man. Yeah, no. Hey, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready for E, the everyday vapor grind <laughs> house. I'm ready for him to start making that, uh, that pumpkin latte juice whenever, it, whenever it comes around that time. Well, yeah, I'm, 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 I am I'm milking that. this grind house little by little until I get some mint me because I do want to put the mint me and the grind house together to get that peppermint mocha that uh Man. that sean talks about all the time i might have to order me some more because that that meant me isn't gonna last me i've had this this uh uh shamrock cookie for a, uh, about three weeks i got about halfway through the bottle and the mint me and his rectum balls i kind of let it sit there and steep for a good amount of time Mm-hmm. And I didn't really vape on it too much, and I let them steep to where I think they're good now. And I don't think I can let it steep no more because I'm about to kill them both because <laughs> they are both just really good. But yeah, so I mean, like we talk about flavors all day. Every vape show talks about flavors. They talk about what they're vaping on, and they always show you with juice. Mm-hmm. I mean you might not be able to find that one juice that that really kicks you. Like whenever I first started vaping, it, it was two juices I might actually do. And they were from my local brick and mortar store. And I would mainly just get those two juices. That's it. I would go in there, get those two juices, buy a new product every now and then, go in there, get coils. Um, and that was it. Now I'm like an all everywhere. Like you've seen, I have dragon shake. I have a mint flavor. I have a strawberry flavor, a blueberry, uh, a lemon uh caramelish flavor and then i have a tobacco flavor in front of me too or caramel vanilla tobacco i mean i got all these different flavors but then the people out there who haven't found vaping yet won't have that mm-hmm. they're only going to be able to find okay yeah well jewel sells uh tobacco this tobacco that and if they make it to where it's a rule to where you have to go out there and actually only uh, what was it? Uh, Jewel, they're doing only tobacco flavors because that's what they're going to start pushing for is only tobacco flavored right. e-liquids. And I mean, if they do that, honestly, what, what are the vapors or what are the people who want to go to vaping honestly going to see from uh, the benefits from vaping? I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are stubborn saying, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I know it's 95% healthier for you, but I mean, 95% healthier for you and you can only vape the same flavors you're smoking. And yeah. To them, it might they might see it as cheaper to keep smoking because they don't see the long term effects. And I mean, even if you're a hobbyist, the amount of money I put into vaping and vape gear and stuff like that is honestly still safer for me than chewing tobacco or smoking tobacco because in the long term, I'm not gonna be paying all these outrageous medical bills because I'm not gonna be sick. I'm not gonna be sitting there with cancer and stuff like that from smoking cigarettes. I mean, to me, it, it's a it's a big win for me, and I'm pretty sure for you and ever, all the other vapors out there. But we got to think about it for all the people out there who don't have that. Whenever they first get into vaping, if it's still around, what are they going to do? Are they going to have to just vape flavors that they already been smoking? They're not going to want that. They're going to want those drops of Jupiter like I used to always vape. They're going to want these uh, sad boy flavors or these deep cut flavors. And honestly, I mean, that's that's one of the big reasons why you see all these uh, coil builders who are starting to make juices not release them in the United States because of all the all the uh, paperwork and everything they had to go through to get it approved. Right. The stuff they have to send into the FDA. They don't want to have to deal with all that. So, like, even look at uh, who it, Coil Turd and um, – is it Twisted Messages making a juice line too? They're not releasing it here. 
they're they're releasing theirs out there in like China and uh, all these other places where right. Indonesia, it, yeah, Indonesia and uh, New Zealand and places like that where it's embraced. Right. Well, a lot of that also has to do with the August eighth. You know, if it wasn't registered by August eighth, you can't come out with a new brand new flavor. Now you can buy, I know the, was it uh, Ryan Hall, Mountain Vapors, you know, they bought a juice line and revamped it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can do that, but now you can't come out with anything new. So anything that, you know, Coil Turd and these guys come out with, you know, I know Grim had some of his new juice or liquid that he was using. And, uh, you know, he said it was really, really good. I think it was like a banana cake. Or something like that, which sounds yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, but uh, you know he can't he can't release it here, which sucks for us. You know we would have to go there and get it, or uh, you know buy it there, for pay some outrageous amount of shipping for it if we possibly yeah. could even do that. Right, and I mean it's just it's hurting the opportunities for the U.S. to have. It's hurting the opportunities for the U.S. to have a healthier lifestyle. And, I mean, honestly, when you look at – I mean, that's one thing that really contradicts me with the U.S. is they went through this big thing of, oh, obesity, obesity. The U.S. is one of the most obese uh, countries on the planet, yada, yada. Yeah, you want to say that, but yet you don't want to – you want to worry about their health like that, but yet you make healthier foods really expensive. Like if you like, honestly, that's why that's honestly what probably keeps people away from eat, eating healthier foods. And I know this isn't, I mean, ties to it, but it's not the best subject to tie to it. But I mean, healthier foods, look at how much more expensive it is. You go buy you some good organic chicken that doesn't have all the hormones and everything else in it. You're going to be paying almost double, sometimes triple. You look yeah. at meats with less fats in them, less steroids in them, less chemicals in them. It's double, triple, quadruple the price. Mm -hmm. You look at stuff like that, vegetables and stuff like that, all that's going up. But then yet you want to buy, you can go to McDonald's and you can buy a burger and you can buy a burger, fries, and a drink for under $5. And it's just like, well, I mean, and even at grocery stores too, you could buy some of the crappiest food in there for super cheap, but not new, good nutrition. Right. I mean, you go to Walmart and you get what you got to have and check out and take your receipt and go to Whole Foods and buy the exact same thing that you bought at Walmart. And you're going to pay probably, I would say, 50 to 75 percent more. Oh, yeah. Easy. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's just. To me, if it I, I don't know if I'm to say this or anything, but the government has been trying to kill off more people by doing that. And that's just me, the FDA government, yada, yada, all that. I mean, me and the local vape store lady, we've always talked about this is like, well, I mean, they say, well, the FDA is always there to help people. Well, look at all the foods they've, they've approved. All the foods they've approved have been terrible for you, for your health, for you. But then you yeah. look at all like they, they, uh, they're approving smoking cigarettes and stuff like that. I mean, that, that doesn't help you. That hurts you more than anything. I mean, it, it's, it's, terrible that they're gonna do stuff like that to where it's they're and i, I think it was uh camera was sean or someone said something about well maybe they're just trying to reduce the population yeah if it's their way of population control i mean honestly it does make sense but i mean why not want to have the strongest healthiest nation if you if you're yeah. the president or if you're the head of the fda you're the head of whoever why not want to have the strongest, healthiest nation? Why not want to have the safest nation? Because were, it's yeah. not about that. It's about, and this is just straight, frank, straightforward. Take it however you want to take it. Everybody in chat, I apologize if I offend anybody. It's whoever can line my pockets the best. Mm -hmm. Who will offer me the best deal to get what they want through here? That's exactly what it comes down to. Yeah. And then they were talking, I, I know there, this is another topic that they're talking about on other show. Look at our country's uh, debt. Yeah. Uh, I'm about to pull it up right now to see what our actual debt is. I mean, our, our debt's huge. And I mean, we, we have one of the biggest debt rates around. 
Um, hopefully it'll pull up. There we go. Yeah, I mean, and then I was looking at us uh, uh, the other day. I was researching to see wh- uh, what populations smoke the most. You look at some of the smaller countries; they don't smoke the most. It's some of the bigger countries that smoke the most, like Russia, China, places like that. Those are one of the biggest countries that smoke the most. Yeah. Let's see where we are on this list. The United States, our population and our debt ratio is 100, 109.45%. And that's one of the highest. There's Japan has 234.18%. I mean, they're almost double than us, but they're double the size, I believe. Yeah. So, I mean, it's our, our debt ratio is just astronomical, but yet they keep saying, oh, well, we, we want the, or they're not saying, but they're pretty much uh, allowing to say, well, yeah, well, it's the money that we're going after. It's the money we're going after. I mean, if it's the money I are going after, y'all still aren't getting it. Look yeah. at that debt. I mean, I'm not just mm-hmm. saying just the natural human debt, but the debt for the country itself. How much debt, how much how much we're in debt with to other countries and all this other stuff why not want to start rebuilding now why not want to and this is just my uh, uh, answer back to you is why not want to start rebuilding now yeah I know we're all for money but can't we make more money off of us being healthier less people dying oh I fully agree with you yeah, but I mean that's not what makes us money in the. That's not what makes the government money in the United States. Right, and I understand. You know, there, and this is totally off subject for what we're talking about. But let's just roll with it. They were, you know, they're talking about balanced budgets, and you know, we don't want to overspend here and underspend here. And I can fully understand that. We have to deal with that at where I work. You know, normally, you know, our fiscal year is different from the regular year. So normally around January, they'll say, "Okay, we're on a budget freeze." You know, you can only do, you know, your bare minimum of what you have to have to operate. And that's all, you know. But instead of the government searching for that balanced budget, why don't they try to search for that budget where they end up in the black? You know, why why do you just want to make the red meet the black and you're done? Why not try to push that black out here? and cut some of the programs that really don't do anything. And I understand, you know, they, they tax because they need to have these programs. And some of them I fully agree with some of them. I don't, but I would want to be not, I wouldn't want a balanced budget. I would want a budget where it stretches my black way out here. Oh yeah. You know, so that's just my opinion. Oh yeah. So if there's any questions from anyone in chat about anything advocacy related or just anything in general, pop them in there real quick and we'll read them off. If there's none, then we'll end the stream here in a couple minutes. But one thing I wanted to bring up on a little lighter note, not, not really advocacy related since this is just like a vape vlog, but it's mainly ran by advocacy is Shane, what are some stuff out there, some products out there that you're really looking forward to getting your hands on or maybe some liquids or maybe just something that you might have heard about that's on the horizon? Uh, There's two things that I'm really looking forward to, and that is the copper keen. I've got a black stainless, (laughs) but I want the copper one too. Same here. uh, Yeah, and I want to get a Turk V2. I just think those two together would be very, very good because you got that matte black copper with that matte black uh, Turk V2. Mm-hmm. I just think that would be just a match made in heaven. And it's got that gold deck. So, I don't know if the inside yeah. of the, if the copper keen is like the copper color, or if it's not, but dude, it's. It probably, yeah, it probably will be. This is my favorite 25 millimeter RDA. And I know he's coming out with colored caps, which is one of the things I'm really looking forward to. but that thing i have a purple blue mod right here it's blue you could somewhat see oh there goes a drip but it's purple it's blue and i mean i have a stainless mod i put it on gold brass mods i put it on the green i have a 
like a light blue right here. Dude, this mod or that that RDA looks to me the best on any mod I put it on. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I would one thing I asked him before I ordered is, hey, can I just order just the black one and get uh, and order a stainless cap with it? He said, I, I got caps coming soon. He said, not yet. Yeah. I got caps coming soon. Because honestly, black or stainless with that RDA is probably my hands down my favorite RDA right now. And I was a big lover of the Goon, the Goon 1.5. I don't have a Goon 25 yet, but the Goon, I used it so much that that was like one of the only RDAs I would pick up until I started getting some of these new ones. And I haven't picked up the Goon really in a while. I've yeah. been using that Turk V2. And I mean, that thing is one of the, my favorites. So one of the bet one of the things I'm looking forward to is like you said that copper keen the uh, matte yeah. black copper keen, I'm looking forward to those Turk uh, caps. I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, other yeah, one thing that, I'm looking for one thing I'm hoping for, and if Dwayne or Graham sees this, is colored caps for this uh, dead goat. Supposedly yeah. they're supposed to be coming out with them. Supposedly, yeah. I would love to have a black one, or you know, maybe even a blue one. Oh yeah. That's definitely one thing I want. Which key is gunmetal? I don't think either. I don't think there is a gunmetal one. I think there's, yeah, it, there's a the lot of black. there's a lot of gunmetal. Like that Pulse uh, X is gunmetal, and it looks okay on there. You know, you yeah. can't see a lot of difference. But if you had like a drop dead, the, the piano black drop dead, or something like that, or yeah, even the axial. Yeah, the black axial is the same color as the black keen, and it's it uh, stands at an electroplated silver or electroplated stainless steel keen is how it gets that color. Yeah, so it's it's still got that shiny look to it, and that's honestly what turned me off from the keen is the shininess. But then they came out the brushed stainless and i was like oh, okay cool i'm gonna get that and then right once that happened he's oh yeah well, we're coming out with the uh copper black i'm like well hell i'm gonna wait then because <laughs> I, don't, I don't think yeah. i have a black uh tube yet and honestly that's all i've been using is tubes yeah yeah domino there's the uh black axial on the black keen and you can see how well it matches with that shiny on shiny or mm -hmm. polished i say shiny i'm from the south But I mean, it looks really good together. Just those two, especially with that 25 where it comes up and meets it right there. Oh, yeah. And that's one reason why I really want the Keen is you can, it's the 25 millimeter uh, adjuster, the 28 yeah. and the 30. And I mean, to me, that uh, the Keen has so much going for it and it just got released. I mean, I don't know if it's just everyone in the Stooge crew that's been fired about it, but I mean, I think everyone's going to be fired about it because. He's only came out with what, maybe six colors now that are going to become, or he has six colors on the market now. And he's still waiting for that black brass one to, or the black copper one to still come in stock, but that's part of the six. Right. Think of, look at the Dreamer. He, he said it yesterday. He has 13 colors that are yeah. out there, not even including the limited edition ones. And I yeah. think he had four colors in that. And you know how Stan is with his colors. This Keen is going to be huge with colors. It's going to—I don't know if he's going to do more colors than the Dreamer. He might be doing some spe or limited edition, edition runs like he did with the Dreamer and the Lucid. But I mean, he's going to be doing some crazy stuff with this. I can already tell you all that now, and I'm pretty sure he might try to make come out another RDA that might go with it, or maybe start doing some colored caps with the Axe or with the uh, Ardent. The Ardent, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you never know when it comes to Stan. I mean, he—he's a he likes his colors and I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure there's gonna be a turquoise one coming out soon. Cause that's, that's his stuff right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Domino. Yes. The copper is flat black and there's some of them that actually have splatter on there. Yeah. Uh, and there I think that a, was that, uh, that, uh, the vape show. They went at, yeah. Yeah. And I, they, I don't know, they may end up releasing more of those, but I think there was a green a red, uh, I want to say there was a blue, but I'm not 100% sure. But I know there was at least green and red splatter on the on the flat black. And it was really neat looking. Uh, hit up True Chris because I think he bought one of them that's splattered. And he'll be able to show it to you. Yeah. And if, if anyone wants to see the, the flat black one 
or the matte black with the Turk V2 on there. I think he, Stan has a picture of it on his Instagram. I know, I think Coil Turd received one and he has yeah. a picture of it. So, I mean, and Stan's site is back up. LucidRDA.com is back yep. up and running. Yeah. yeah, his site's back <laughs> up and running. It's LucidRDA.com. Um, he's got some tweaks he's got to go through. And I mean, <laughs> there's, there's no, a reverie, no. right? Yeah, don't buy the Black Reverie, whatever you do. <laughs> if you do, Stan's going to owe you a lot of money for a lot of products. So any product he comes you, out with, he's probably going to have to owe you. <laughs> if you do buy it, he said last night he would donate $10,000 of it to uh, advocacy. <laughs> so. <clears throat> so I don't think I see many questions. So Shane, is there any ending words you want to go through with this? Uh, you know, like I said every week, man, it's, it's kind of like, I guess you could say a catchphrase or however you want to say it, but everybody out there, let your voice be heard, whether it's one voice or whether it's a hundred voices, it doesn't matter. Always speak your voice about anything you're passionate about. You know, we talk advocacy here. We talk, you know, everything that has to do with pretty much vaping period, because we love it. We want it to stay around. We need to, as hobbyists or really anybody, we need to, foster and you know invigorate the other vapors that we know and also we need to get out there and speak to the people that don't vape and that's the reason i say let your voice be heard share your story with someone it doesn't matter if it's a smoker a former smoker uh, a vapor you may inspire that casual vapor to go out and speak their mind to somebody else hey this guy you know he's so passionate about this and he wants us to get on board and, and help them out with this and this and this. And it may make an impact. You never know. But if you don't do it, then you never know what you could be able, what you could accomplish. So let your voice be heard. That's what I want everybody to understand. Yeah. Because, I mean, Shane's not a reviewer. I'm not a huge reviewer. I do review some products. I review juices. I, I, anything I get my hands on, I pretty much try to review if I like it. There's some stuff I don't like, but... I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. No social media platform. It doesn't matter what it is. Let your voice be heard. Even if it's just uh, communicating to people with your words by speaking to them, by writing a letter, let your word be heard because you, you do have a voice. Everyone does. Even if you don't have a voice because you can't speak, you still have the ability to write. You have to still have the ability to do anything. I mean – like the American dream, you, you come here and you could be anything. You have your voice to let you be whoever you want to be. So make sure whatever you're doing out there, you're letting your voice be heard. You're letting everyone know who you are, the real true you. And whatever you really believe in, stand up for it. Fight for it, like Shane says. Because, I mean, like we like to say, okay, yeah, well, we, we won a battle in Texas. I've already said this today, but we won a battle in Texas, but the fight's not over. The war's not over. There's still a huge fight and war over vaping products. But, I mean, we still have to go out there. We have to do what we know we need to do. There's so much more that's coming along with this. I mean, you never know. There could be more laws coming through. There could be more uh, regulations coming through. I already know there is going to be. There might be some nationwide stuff. There might be some statewide, county, city, whatever it is. Make sure you pay attention to it and make sure you go out there. And if it's happening to you, make sure you let them know why you don't want it to happen to you. I mean, it's there's nothing you could do if you just sit back and relax and let it happen. Right. You can't sit back and say, oh, well, oh, well, man, I, this is so stupid. I can't believe they did this. Well, I mean, if, if you if you do that, then I mean, there's you can't really fuss about it. You have to sit there and you you can't let you can't let them do that to you. You have to fight back you have to tell them exactly how you feel about it and be respectful when you do it because i mean these are people who are politicians these are people who are i don't want to say above you but they work for you so right. let them know hey you work for me you are here because of me so this is what i believe in this is what i think we should do and let all your friends let all your relatives know that they should do the same thing i mean even if they don't believe even if they're not vapors and everything, if you can eventually convince them that vaping is better than smoking, it's 95% safe for you. In some countries, they say it's 98%. I mean, hell, I even let them look at what New Zealand's done. 
and all the other countries around them who have had bad battles. But then there's a little small country, New Zealand, right next to Australia, where they're fighting one of the worst vaping wars ever. But then you have them right next door to them, and they're embracing it. They're saying by 2025, we're going to be smoke-free. There will be no tobacco here. We, we won't need it. We won't have a use for tobacco. That's right. something that speaks huge right there. Because they said, hey, we, we ain't, we're not going to deal with that. Right next door to us, we're staying right here, and we're, this is the path we're going in. So make sure we mm-hmm. have a clear path to where we're going. Let's make sure we let the country and your state and your county and your city know what your path is and why you want to be there and how much it's actually helped you. Because, I mean, honestly, I don't know anyone who has – who I don't know anyone – who's vaped, who hasn't had a good success story or anything mm-hmm. to work to actually help them with more than just their everyday life. I mean, right. it, it helps out a lot. So I want everyone to know that vaping does help. So, I mean, just get out there and let everyone know your story and let them know what has actually helped you. Right. And then, you know, the other thing is do your own research. You know, don't just take our word for it or anybody else you find. You know, they mentioned something to you. Go back and look it up. I mean, you know, just about – I would say 95% of people in the world have a smartphone and you can look up whatever you want. You know, if somebody says something to you and you don't believe it, just look it up and verify it. And, you know, not to say point out that they're wrong, but just let them know, Hey, you know, that's not really true information. Here's the actual information, you know, something like that. But, you know, you want to be classy about it. You know, like Sean says, don't be a dick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is going to wrap up our show. Remember, the next couple of shows, we might be doing some giveaways. We do have our sponsor now, Clown Vapes. Um, we're going to be getting this uh, show formatted a different way to where we can put our logos in there, and we're going to have uh, Clown's logo and everything. So, I mean, we are going to be doing some giveaways. The only way to be able to participate in those giveaways is to come on to the show. So, I mean, I'm not saying that to get more views and everything, but I mean, <laughs> it's the stuff that we need to do to where, I mean, it's – the best reason why I want people to come in here is because I want people to hear the word of advocacy and hear where advocacy is going and hear where the country is going. So, I mean, this is something that's really important to me. It's really important to everyone who's in chat. Um, so, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that we need to pay attention to, and I try to get you all the best information as possible. I know Shane's been doing a bunch of research. He's been helping me out a lot, been taking a lot of weight off my shoulders to help out. So, I mean, this is something that we can, that we're putting a lot of our effort into and a lot of our time into just for y'all. So, I mean, this is one way we want to give back is by the people who show up, is by doing a couple of giveaways. And you never know, we might throw in some other stuff. I might go out there and buy some products. I mean, I might go out there and do a review on some juice and say, hey, this is one of my favorite juices. I want someone else to try it. Let me throw it in with some coils or let me do my own giveaway. Mm-hmm. You never know. Or maybe one of maybe one of my favorite RDAs or favorite tanks or favorite mods. You never know. But y'all gotta yep. stay tuned to that. So I mean, and it could be it could be a mystery. You may win coals and open your box and have something other than the coal or with the coals along with it. We may not even tell you. Oh yeah. So I mean, we, there, there's definitely some stuff to come, and there's a whole lot more to come with advocacy stuff. And there's a whole lot more fighting, like I already said. So I mean, let's stay out there. Like Mister, F- like we're taking a lot of people's catchphrase. I've noticed that, but. <laughs> Let's stay out there. Let's be positive. Like uh, Frames Janklin always says, we need to stay positive. That's one thing I really like about him is he's always positive. No matter how bad the vape industry is going, and the vape mm-hmm. community, he's always someone who stays positive. So let's make sure we stay positive. Let's get out there. Let's do something. Fight for your rights. It's one of the hashtags I always put in a lot of my advocacy posts. Fight for your rights. Do your part. Don't sit back and let someone do it for you or think, oh, okay, yeah, well, uh, Like over here in Texas, oh, Angela Garrity, Nick Garrity, uh, Joel. Yeah, man, Stan. Oh, yeah, they've got this covered. I don't need to do nothing. No, I still need to do my part. I can't sit there and say we want to fight if I didn't do anything to help. I didn't get to do a whole lot, but I still got to do something to help. So we all need to do our own part. We need to all fight for our rights because, I mean, these are our rights as U.S. citizens that we we have the uh, right to uh, freedom of speech and everything. So make sure we get out there with this fight for our rights. But until next time, I hope to see y'all. I hope to see y'all next week. Also, might have a special guest on. Hopefully, we do. Because I mean, when we have a special guest on, we might be getting some other stuff getting thrown into those giveaways and stuff. So hopefully, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> hope to see y'all next week. And don't forget to go check out Poon Sauce McNasty on 
uh, YouTube. He, his show will start in about 40 minutes, and he's going to have Mr. Overdrip on there. And hopefully it's not a it's not a minutes. show again. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully this show goes good for him. I mean, Overdrip is a really cool guy. We talk to him. Me and Shane, we talk to him almost daily. And we talked to Poon Sauce almost daily. Some really good guys. So stay tuned to their show and go on there and see what uh, Overdrip's uh, story is. See, see what got him into vaping and see what keeps him in vaping. But until next week, guys, we'll see y'all later. And remember, vape on. Get out there. Let's, get av- let's be advocates. But not only advocates, let's get active and let's do something. Stay motivated and keep fighting. See y'all next week. Bye.